Hey there, history peeps. Uh, welcome back again. I hope you're doing well. This video is actually going to be about like a few different concepts that are very important. They're actually two of our principles of government that we've already talked about, and that's going to be separation of powers and checks and balances. We're going to talk about separation of powers first, then checks and balances, because these two principles are kind of like best friends. They're always hand in hand, right? They're always working together. You really can't have one without the other, I suppose. I mean, maybe you kind of can't, but anyway, they um, have a lot of overlap, which is totally fine. And with that, we are also going to be talking about our three branches of government, and we're going to have later videos about each one of those branches of government. So if you feel like it's kind of surface level on a lot of that stuff, it is okay, because there's going to be a whole other video about it. Um, so let's dive right in. I'm going to talk about separation of powers first. So what is separation of powers? Well, it's the idea that different parts of your government do different functions or different duties. Okay, why do we use that? Well, the reason for that is that if different parts of your government are doing different things, it is kind of a built-in aspect of the governmental structure that will stop any one group from having too much power. And when one group has too much power in your government, guess what happens? You get a tyrant. And to the founders, and if you look at some historical examples, tyrants tend to be just one person, but sometimes it can be an oligarchy. So um, these found, the founders also didn't want, like, Congress. And we'll learn more about Congress in the next video, actually. But they didn't want Congress to have too much power, even though Congress is kind of the representatives of the people. We didn't want them to have too much power just all in one place. So the reason you're going to have separation of powers is to hopefully try and make sure that your government can run efficiently and protect the freedom of its citizens by having different groups do different things. They're going to choose them in different ways. They're going to represent different interests. So what does that look like in America, in the U.S., today and with our Constitution? Well, you got three different branches of government. Um, and they are called the legislative branch, the executive branch, and uh, the judicial branch. And they're the first three articles of our Constitution are in that same order. They kind of show uh, the importance of each branch to the founders. And Congress gets the longest article in the Constitution when talking about which three branches, which one's most important. It's the legislative branch. They have the most to say about that in the Constitution then the executive, and then by the time you get to the judicial branch, it's almost like that Article 3 is almost just tacked on. Um, but anyway, what do these three groups do? Well, we'll talk more about the structure of Congress in our video on it, but basically, Congress makes laws. They are going to look at an issue. They are going to write what we call a bill, which is like a law that's not a law yet. It's an idea for a law. They write a bill. They run it through committees. They edit make drafts, they edit it a lot like what you would do in a language arts class, and they have to look at all the ramifications of doing this thing, and they decide whether it's going to be good or bad for the American people, and then they can pass uh, that bill into law. Now the president has to sign it, we'll talk more about that in a second, and then when we talk about the president, but they make the laws, they write it, okay, they do the dirty work there to write the plans. The next branch is the executive branch, which is the president plus all of the executive departments, which are just all the people working for the president. We'll talk more about that in this class. But anyway, these are the people responsible for enforcing the laws. Okay, so these are the people who they look at what's on the piece of paper that Congress has given them. Oh, there's a law. How are we going to enforce it? Well, we need police to know that they need to do this, or we need a whole agency that's going to be responsible for enforcing this law. And so whenever you hear people talk about how big our federal government is and all the things that they do, they're talking about parts of the executive branch that, you know, have agencies that basically started at, to fulfill federal laws passed by our Congress. The third branch is the judicial branch, which is all of our federal courts. The tip top and the one we're going to talk most about in eighth grade is going to be the Supreme Court, which is very, very important. Um, and their job is to interpret laws. So they just sit back and they say, okay, Congress, what'd you, like, create, what'd you create today? And they'll say, well, that's constitutional or that's not, or that's unconstitutional. 
They don't say whether it's good or bad. They don't say whether it'll be awesome or terrible. They say whether under the powers of our Constitution, Congress can do it. And they do the same thing with presidential actions. They can look at something the president has done or an agency policy or something an agency has done, and they can say, okay, well, that is not okay. We need to stop doing that right now. So again, you got your three branches. Legislative creates the laws. Executive enforces the laws. And judicial interprets the laws. So the next concept we're going to talk about is checks and balances. Written into the Constitution are kind of the various things that each branch can do to stop another branch from getting too powerful. They can check and balance our government. It's kind of a weird way to phrase it, but it's all, I, I like that balance piece. And that check piece means to slow down or stop. Okay, so just a few examples, and we always have like graphic organizers for this, and we'll spend a lot of time learning a lot of the specifics, because there's actually a lot of ways and powers that um, different parts of our government interact here. But let's say Congress passes a bill, you know, the people want it. It seems like a good idea to Congress. If the president says, wait a minute, that's a terrible idea, the president can veto or stop that bill. So then it doesn't become a law. And then Congress can come back, and there's a whole process to it, but that's a basic example. Another one, if a president is starting to act like, let's say, like a king or do something too crazy, uh, Congress can then impeach and remove that president if they decide. So what it means with checks and balances and separation of powers together, kind of to sum up this whole video, it basically means that you, since they're all selected in different ways, each branch might have different interests and different things that they want, any from political parties and one branch might be controlled by a certain political party while another branch isn't, which can create a lot of gridlock. Um, but basically what it means is they have separate interests, but because of checks and balances, they have to care about what every part of the government thinks about what they're doing, and they have to then work through it and make compromises. Um, it can just be like the president saying, we need to do this and this and this and this, and it doesn't matter what kind of says, nope. That'll cause a lot of trouble for you down the road. Okay, so different parts of our government do different things, but they do have to work together. So that's separation of powers and checks and balances. You all have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.